Okay, so here's our blocking board. Just got it all laid out. So I have a couple pieces that we've already worked on. There's our honeycomb design. You can see it. And there's our basic braid design, just so you can see that. Now to go ahead and block anything, you're going to need a, a few tools. One of them being a surface to block on. In this case, I'm using my blocking board. You can use cardboard as well. Um, some people will pin things out to their mattress or to their carpet. I actually do not recommend this. Uh, I strongly encourage you, don't do that. Because you occasionally are going to end up with a pin in your bed or in your carpet. And because we're going to be steaming things, unless you have wool carpet, uh, you will melt any acrylic carpet, which is how you never get your security deposit back. Anyway, you are also going to need pins. I have mine in this cool little jar here. And I use these. These are called T-pins. And they're called that because they look like tiny T's. And these ones are actually a lot thicker than um, other pens. Uh, I like them because they're easier for me to grab and I can put a lot more pressure on these than I can on some of my more delicate pens. Okay, so you have pens. And then you are also going to need one of these. Oops, you can actually see the whole thing. Ta da! And iron. This is not an expensive iron. This is about a $10 iron from your local store. Um, but you need one that will steam and has a high steaming option because we are going to have to steam the crap out of something. So go ahead and get one that will let you do that. All right, back to pinning. Now, step one of blocking, is about 95% of blocking is pinning something. And first you want to start off with how large do you want your finished piece to be? I'm going to pick the smaller one first, just for demonstration purposes. All right, how large do you want your piece to be? Now, for the pillow cover that I'm working on, that's going to be 6 inches wide and 18 inches long. So that has a set length, and that actually does fit on my board. But for this one here, I don't have a set size, so I'm kind of freehanding this a little tiny bit. But if you had a set size, you would measure out, and I like to start at the base, measure out how wide you want that to be. Pin that just in the corners. And all you're going to do is take your pins. If it's a smaller piece like this, I put them in at an angle. Okay. If it's a bigger piece, I just put them in straight down. And that's because I have to get in here with my iron, and I want to get my iron very close to the surface. So go ahead and just grab a couple of couple pins, just lay them out there. You're going to be using a lot of pins, so if you don't have any, uh, buy a couple hundred, realistically. I know that sounds like a whole lot, but once you get to big pieces, I probably use at least 400 pins to do my, my gray piece here, about 400 of them. And blocking is 95% pinning and about 5, well, 3% of uh, actually steaming and 2% of moving your pins around and cursing a little bit because you got your measurements wrong. That's my experience. <laughs> All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to lay this out. I'm going to figure out about how tall I want this to be. Feel free to stretch this a little. You're going to need to do that. And again, just put it in at an angle. And then find your corner. And again, put it in at an angle. And you just want these sides to be relatively straight, if that's your goal. You want your sides to be relatively straight, if that's your goal. If that's not your goal, like you just wanted this to come in, just leave it like that. I would like these to be relatively straight, so I'm going to pin them in a relatively straight manner. Now the one of the ways I do this is I will start at the corners and then I like to pin in the middle, okay? And you'll notice it still pulls in a little bit, but if I do it like this, 
All right, you see how it's starting to pull some? That's going to let me see what this is going to look like, and I can rearrange things a little bit easier. Like that piece needs to come out. You just take out your pen, come out just a tiny bit more. Boom, done. And again, you go to the middle, pull it up, pin it down. From the middle, pull out, pin down. From the middle, pull out, pin down. And then I just do this one side at a time because I can move these around later on. Okay? And I recommend that you only keep a few pins out at a time because, you know, if you have cats or kids or like me and just clumsy, um, you're going to end up knocking this thing over and if you only have to pick up a dozen sharp and pointy objects, that works out a lot better than having to pick up, you know, 200 sharp and pointy objects because you are going to miss one, in my experience, and then people find them with their feet and they get all upset and, you know, say you're trying to kill them with your, your crafting supplies and it just turns into a big old mess. So go ahead and lay that out. And if you're looking at this and you go, man, that, that's just too tight. I don't like the way that works. You could just pull these out and push them in a little bit. Make that a little less tight. Okay. I don't think it's too tight, so I'm just going to put that back where it was. But you get what I'm saying. And just lay all this stuff out. Now when I'm doing things that have a finer edge, if I really need them to be very, very square, I'm probably going to be putting in a pin every row, every other row. Doesn't sound like a whole lot till you realize for the first section of this, that's 156 rows. That's over 300 pins per side, uh, per long side, plus 40 on each of the top and the bottom. So you're looking at you know, about 400 pins, like I said. So this process could take a hot minute. Okay. Get down to about the shape that you want. Use as many of these pins as you feel you need to. And boom. That is the finished shape that I want. Okay, so we're going to start and steam this. I'm going to go ahead and block the other piece just so you can see, have another example of what this looks like. Here's a cool thing if you have a blocking board, you can put multiple pieces down. So amazing. Okay. I'm doing this using the same process. Find your corner, pick a spot. Now, if you have a finished measurement that you want, something that's helpful is to go ahead and draw out your finished shape. Um, blocking circles can get a little bit interesting, um, but draw out your finished shape. And the reason that you want to do that is so that you're just coming along here and putting things along the edge of that instead of having to like try to work it as you go okay that is my experience I have many many lessons and frustration on this <laughs> so when I first started learning how to do this nobody bothered to tell me anything about blocking no one bothered see what happens when I didn't put something in the middle See how that just pulled in? Yes, that is why you want something in the middle. It will help it retain its integrity. Shape right there. Boom. Done. So when I started this, nobody told me anything about blocking. And I always had no idea why my pieces came out looking different than the one in the picture. Blocking is one of those things that's super important, but I don't think enough people go over with beginning knitters. Okay, and see how that's a little bit too tight. I think think that looks very good, so I'm just going to relax this a little bit. Let that come in some. And then I simply adjust this corner. There you go. You can move this around. Ta -da! Problem solved. So anyway, no one explained that to me, and I kind of had to figure it out on my own, what blocking was and how to block with acrylic versus anything else. And so this is why when you're figuring out what kind of fiber you want, it's kind of important to know what fiber you're working with. Because how you block different fibers, that actually matters. 
So for acrylic and blocking, we're going to steam the holy bejesus out of this. And I do mine a little bit differently. Mine's a little more daring. You're going to see why. But I think that the finished product comes out a lot better because it's not as flat. Okay. If you're using a natural fiber such as wool or cashmere or um, even cotton, they don't really take very well to steaming. Um, it doesn't hold its shape as well. It's going to go back to its original shape, um, which is all scrunched together. So the way you would block that is that you have to wash something very thoroughly um, in a hand wash only detergent. Get a little salad spinner. It's going to help you get all that extra moisture out. It's a couple dollar investment you can get from the dollar store and then just only use it for your for your wool because you know you don't want to use detergent with your lettuce. It tends to end poorly for those eating it. Um, and you would just wash it very thoroughly, block it out, just like I'm doing now. And then you would let it dry for like 24 hours. Make sure it's really, really, really dry. Because if it is wet at all, um, it's just going to scrunch back together again, which is, you know, why you're blocking something is so that it does not do that. You can kind of adjust this as you go. I'm almost done now with this piece. But a lot of people, especially when they're starting, tend to use acrylic. It's um, it's a bit more affordable. I recommend starting using acrylic. One, because it's affordable. It tends to stand up to a bit more abuse than wool, um, which is another very common fiber. Um, although, by all means, if you'd like to start in wool, please go ahead and do that. But acrylic you can find in a lot of places. And if you are just starting, I'd say don't make a giant investment until you know it's something that you want to do. Okay? You know, don't spend $60 on something if you're not really sure you want to do this because most of us don't just have $60 or $80 just laying around for wool. We have to budget that out. All right. So there's about the, the finished size I want. This is pulled a little bit tighter. Now, in my other finished piece, I have more stitches here. So this edge isn't quite as severe. If you don't like the way that looks, like I said, just take this out. Pull it in a little bit closer. So that's it. That's all I would do. Just pull that in just like that, which is exactly what I'm going to do. And this is why I love blocking boards. Now, could you imagine doing this on a mattress? Oof. That could be unpleasant. Especially since you're on a time limit. You can't just put wool out there and be like, oh, it'll be done in 24 hours. That's fine, honey. Where are you going to sleep till then? Um, <laughs> the same thing as if you're going to put this on carpet. Okay. I think that pulls in just a little bit better. It's like I said, there's a lot of fidgeting to get this to look right because once we steam this by the way that is the shape it will hold forever and ever and ever amen um there is no unsteaming acrylic so just get it right the first time so lots of fidgeting lots of moving pins around for that you know the perfect little millimeter there okay so i'm gonna call that done so i don't fidget with it for the next 45 minutes as i'm wont to do Okay, now that we have everything laid out, I'm going to go get my iron set up, and we will steam these. And uh, block them, and you will see what I mean. Okay, now that my iron is all nice and hot, what you're going to want to do on your iron, by the way, is turn that knob all the way up to super duper steam, as high as you can. And a lot of irons have a button on them right there. They'll allow you to spritz water. And that's what I like to do. I just spritz a little bit of water on here. And then I just hold this as well. And hold it until you start to notice your stitches pulling in. What you're doing with this is actually melting the acrylic just slightly. And you're going to notice 
that this holes in. It's probably really hard to see, and it'd be very hard to show on this camera anyway. But I find that this helps the stitches hold their shape and they don't come out flat. If you were to put a towel over this and put your iron on top of it, it would flatten out all of that cabling that you just did. So don't feel bad about making sure that this whole thing is steamed. That's what you're going to want to do. Let's go over the whole thing and steam it. Okay. So there's the first piece. Pick it up. It's going to be pretty hot. And then let's move over to our second piece. And um, again, take and spritz with water. And you're going to stop every so often because your iron's going to cool off. Let it heat back up. Hold over the top. You don't want your iron to actually touch your acrylic, by the way. That will melt the acrylic to your iron, and that is just a big old mess that you really just don't want to deal with. Okay. You're just going to hold it about an inch away. Okay. Steam, 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 steam. Make sure the whole thing is done, including all of your edges. This may take a couple extra minutes. Let me stand up so I can see what I'm doing. And once everything stops pulling, go ahead and take your iron away. Turn it off. Very important you remember to turn your iron off when you're done. Okay, give that a second or two to cool off. I don't know if you can see it, but it's still actually steaming right now. It's very hot. Okay, and now for the magic. Start to pull your pins out. Remember how much work we had to do to get this thing to get pinned down flat? When I take my pins out, what's going to end up happening is a big old nothing. That's it. Nothing is going to happen, which is exactly what you want. I also like T pins because pulling them out is really easy. You can just grab the top of that little T and just pull. Okay, just pull. I think that'll come out. Ba -da 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 -da. So a good section is also is going to be unpinning things. The pinning and the unpinning tend to take a little while. Um, make sure you have all the sharp and pointy things in a pile that is not going to be knocked over. Okay. Like I said, you remember all that work we had to do to put that together? That's its shape. That is the shape that it will have forever and ever and ever. It's right there. So whenever you have a piece a little bit easier and you want it to stay square and it's acrylic that's all you do same thing for this one over here remember how all these stitches pulled in and this was kind of a wonky look whenever you have cabling like this it pulls it open so you can really see the cable same thing for lace work this is really gonna pull it open because when you make lace work it scrunches up into this little tiny ball but when you lay it out flat you know, the little ball that's this big might be a six foot wide shawl, so you have to block it. And like I said, once you do, again, there's a little bit more of the magic. And by magic, I mean absolutely nothing happens. Now, I just want to show you something here. The other reason I like T-pins is because if you have other pins like that one, see what happened there? It got too close to my iron, and it melts the top, which, you know, creates a dirty iron, which is no good. So get yourself some tea pens. Just invest in them. Get the heavier, dutier ones, okay? It just, it works better. Um, and they're much easier to see if you drop something on the ground. There you go. Boom. There's a shape forever. That is how you block, and that is why you how you block an acrylic, and also that is why you block. When I go to stitch these things together, 
are going to do that. I have a nice easy edge to work with. You'll notice it would be a lot easier for me to sew those two edges together than it would be if they were all scrunched up. And trying to block this so that the edge here lays flat would be um, a giant hemorrhoid uh, to work on because I would have to block this edge here and I have to block this edge down here and then up the middle. So if you're doing piecework, just block each section individually and then sew it together. It's going to work out a lot easier for you. All right. So thanks for seeing yarn over here with Joe. See you guys next time.